Hi everyone, how's it going? In today's video, I'll be teaching you how to build a video call up with Zego Cloud. So if you find this video to be useful and helpful, consider subscribing, like and share. So with that said, let's get started. Zego Cloud is a global communication service provider that provides a developer-friendly and powerful SDKs and APIs to build many communication features within your app, such as the video calls, the chats, the video conferences, the live streaming and many more. The offers UI kit, which is a pre-built feature-rich component that enables you to build video call with only few lines of code. It includes all the business logic with the UI, and there is also flexibility to add or remove features by customizing the UI components. So in today's video, I'll be showing you how to integrate the video call app in Flutter with Zego Cloud. So with that said, please jump right in. So for a quick start, we need to add Zego UI kit pre-built call as a dependency to our app. So the command is flutter pop add zego ui kit pre built core so i'll just pop up my terminal and run the command so this dependency will be added to the passport.yml file as you can see we have a successful installation over here and the next step is to import the sdk right so once we have that imported we need to first to use the zego ui kit pre built core in our project we need to head towards to admin console and create a project so that we can have access to the app id and also the app sign of the project so in here if you don't have an account here you can just proceed to sign up i already have an account so i'll just log in over here so once you sign up you will be directed towards this console where you have access to create a new project over here so you need to select a use case for your app right so you have the video and voice call instance you have the video conference the live streaming the live audio the in-app chats and many more so in here you proceed with the video and voice call and click on the next button right so in here you need to give the name of the project so i'll proceed to give the name as the video call demo there you go so in here there are two ways to get started you have the ui kits and also the sdk we proceed with the ui kit it already have the pre-built feature rich components where you can get access by just specifying our app id and also the app sign so in here to start creating your project So once our app project is created, we can just start building our app. So in here, we select the Flutter as our use case over here. There we go. We have save and start to integrate at the bottom over there. So we need to click on that button. And there we have our app ID over here and also the app sign over here. Let's proceed. So we need to specify the user ID and also the username for connecting the call kit service. And we need to create a caller ID that represents the call we want to make. And make sure the user ID and the caller ID can only contain numbers, letters, and also underscores. And user that can join with the call with the same call ID can talk to each other. So in here, they have a sample code that navigates to the call page. So it's basically returning the Zigo UI kit pre built call where we need to pass in our app ID, the app sign the user id and also the username and the color id as well so with the configuration it's going to be one on one video call so i'll just grab this code over here and within my code below the home i'll just paste that over there so in here we need to import the zigo ui kit pre-built call right and we need to specify our app id and also the app sign so with the app id move to our console and just grab the app id over here and just paste it over here and with the app sign too we can just grab the app sign over here and just replace that sorry the app id need not to be within a string value so i'll just remove the string over there there you go so here you need to save the changes and proceed from here so basically this user id come from your system 
over here you know so the username based on the use case of your app you need to pass in the color id as well so i think that's basically it over here so let's proceed to make some modification within our android folder right so first of all we need to change um the compiler sdk version to 33 and above any you know, of them will fit within our build or gradle file and also we need to set a main sdk version to 21 over here so let's do that so within our android folder the app folder we have the build or gradle file so in here we need to change the compile sdk version to 33 and above you can i choose to be 34 over here and also set the main sdk version over here to 21 So let's proceed to the next step right so we need to modify the kotlin version over here below as they've done it right so um you need to upgrade from if the version is 7.3 above we need to upgrade that to 1.8.0 and made the necessary changes over here right so when i check my kotlin version within the android directory that's the build gradle file not within the app but within the android directory can see i'm not having those information right here so i decide to skip this step right so if you have that you need to make sure that you change that to 1.8.0 that's the kotlin version over here and also change um the android to better gradle right only if you have such information over there so in here you need let's proceed to add the permissions within our android manifest file right so right within our android app main you can see android manifest file you can proceed to paste this permissions over here and saving the changes and the last step is to prevent the code obfuscation so within our project android app you need to create a file known as the program rules.pro and paste in this code right so already have that created so i'll just guide you over here so within this app you need to create a file known as the program rules.pro and paste in this line of code all right so once we have that we need to add one more line of code to the release part in the build or gradle file so we need to grab that over here so within the app build or gradle file to the release part we need to add that over here similar to this one so that's basically the configuration within the android right so let's proceed with the ios so let's proceed with the ios configuration so first of all within our port file we need to add this to the following um post install do installer right so just as they've done it over here so i'll just close close my android and within the port file over here you can just add this line of code starting from here and ending over there yeah so just like this So they have example below right so once you have that we need to open our info the pillars file and request access grants for our camera and microphone right so that should be done within the info the pillars file so within the runner you can see the info the pillars file so within the date file that part I already have that added right so this basically request for camera and microphone access from the user right so we need to add that as seen below right so with the test step by default is set to no so you can just proceed to check as well right so we need to check within your runner as good file check the build set under the build setting we have the build options and check for build libraries for distribution if it's set to yes you can just change that to no right there and that's basically it the next step is to run and test your app so let's proceed with the configuration So over here you can just close all the tab make sure you have the changes saved so i'll modify the code page to accept um the user id and also the username dynamically right so i'll just be adding two more additional params over here that is in the user id and also the username right so that will be passed dynamically and the user id over here the username over here will be changed to the username and also we just pass in the user id 
just like this right so make sure you have that required in the constructor there you go so the body of the scaffold i'm going to start with the center widget right so the chart of the center is going to be a column that is in the children so this basically aligns its child vertically right so let's set the main axis alignment of this column to be main axis alignment or center and also let's proceed to set across as this alignment as well to be cross as this alignment or center and this will center everything within the column so basically within um the children of over here you are going to have two test form field right so in here you'll be accepting the username and also the color id right so you're going to have two test form field so the first test form field takes in the controller right so after i'll be creating um the color id controller right and that's going to be of the test editing controller so the variable name is going to be call id controller then we assign our test editing controller so over here you can proceed to pass the call id controller to the test form field over here so you can get rid of the cons in here to get rid of the errors and also let's proceed to decrease this input right so the decoration argument you can pass in the input decoration and let's say the label text so the label that is going to be join a video call with id right so join a video call with id or by id so let's provide a cons over here so let's repeat one more test form field right and that's going to be for the username what's happening oops my bad um, the test form field needs to be outside of the inner test form field, right? So, below this test form field, that's where we need to place the other test form field, right? So, here we need to change in the controller over here to be the username controller. So, it's not yet created. So, at the top of that, there, I'll be creating the variable that's the username controller, and that's going to be of the test editing controller, just like that. And I'll change in the label text over here to be the username. there you go so below these two um inputs is going to be a size box that separates or give enough space right so I'm going to provide a height of 15. so below here is going to be an elevated button right with an unpressed and also the child argument so the child of this button is going to be a text and the text is going to take in a text of joint and also the unpress is going to trigger the function that will navigate to the call page right so within the unpress you will navigate to our call page and pass in the necessary arguments right so we proceed with navigator dot push so in here takes in the context and also the route and the route is going to be material page route that takes in the builder the builder is a function that requires the context and navigate to a page right so in here with an arrow function you can just navigate to the call page so in here you can see you need to pass in the call id the user id and also the username right so with the call id to be coming from the call id controller then we assess the text right so this basically grab the text of the user and also you need to pass in the user id and also the username right um so with the user id i want a random number right so and for that i use a dependency or a package known as the nanoid right and that generates a unique number in each use case and with the username it's going to be the username controller then we assess the text just like this and saving the changes and i think that's pretty much it over here so when you click on the button we'll be navigating to the call page passing in what the user enters right as their call id and remember user with the same call id can join the room right so i bring in my emulator over here and give it a test and there we go you can see we have what we just so let's wrap the column 
in a pattern over here to give enough space and this pattern is going to affect all sides a value of 15 there you go so it works perfectly on 100 so i'll start by typing in my id and also the username and join the call you can see we've been navigated to the call page right so, so i also try it on the simulator right to see if the ios configuration works as well right so from there i'll choose my simulator over here and there you go you can see it works on ios and android right so right from here i'll be trying it with my physical device and that's iphone right so so that I can actually see my face and there's probably i think the first or second time i just show my face on this channel so you can just try it on mine and there we go you can see it over there hi everyone so that's basically it seeing an tutorial until then stay tuned